Welcome to the new Fly Fisher. I'm Tom Rosenbauer, and in today's show, we're going to talk about prospecting for trout. We're going to discuss uh, and see where trout live, how they feed, what they need, how to read the water, how to pick a fly, and how to judge the richness of a trout stream. I hope you enjoy it. Stay with us. That was awesome. Let him go back to live another day. Oh, baby! Look at that fish. We talked earlier about having the optimum conditions. Here we've got perfect conditions. We've this is a good example of the family Heptagenaeidae. This is why you need a lot of backing. Today we are fly fishing near Lake Placid in upstate New York. Wilmington is a small town nestled alongside the beautiful west branch of the Asalvo River. This area is a fly fisher's dream. The river is renowned for its beauty, fishing, and abundant hatches of caddis, mayflies, and stoneflies. There's over 35 miles of clean, mineral-rich waters to angle in, with five miles dedicated to strict catch-and-release fishing. Miles of pocket water, riffles, deep pools, and long channels, the West Branch provides great opportunity for anglers if they have the skills to properly locate fish in this vast river. When I first began fly fishing, I struggled to find good books that spelled out the fundamentals in language that was easy to understand. Then I discovered Prospecting for Trout, written by Tom Rosenbauer. Finally, a book that made total sense to a novice yet still had lots of solid advice for veterans. For several years I have wanted Tom to appear on the show to talk about prospecting for trout, as I know people would really enjoy learning from it and him. This year Tom is relaunching this very successful book with updated information, diagrams and photos. Here was finally my chance to get him to appear on the show. Tom is one of those special people any one of us would love to fish with. He possesses abundant wit, charm and humor. Best of all, he's a phenomenal teacher. You can't help but learn when you fish with him. Tom took a few minutes to talk about why he created the book and how it helps teach people the basics of fly fishing for trout and other species. I prospecting for trout because um, I felt there was, a, there was room, there was a need for a book that balanced fishing with the natural world, with what a trout does in its world with what insects do, with what the geology does to a river valley, and how you can look at a river from, from very far away, can you, how you can step back and see how to fish the river, learn how to fish the river just by looking at the banks and the rocks and the geology without ever having to turn over rocks or study entomology. The objectives of prospecting for trout were originally to introduce people to a trout's world, what a trout needs. That was the most important thing. If you understand what a trout needs to survive and pass its genes on to the next generation, um, then, you, then you learn an awful lot about fishing. So what does a trout need in a stream? What velocity does it need? How close does it need to be to food? Do they move around a lot or don't they move around a lot? And what, what affects their movement in a stream or lack of movement for that matter? I really wrote, wrote the book for someone who, who doesn't understand a trout stream, who looks, at, who looks at this river and just sees a bunch of flowing water and, and says, oh my God, that's way too fast for a fish to live in and doesn't get down to the little niches and see how there's, there's spots below the rocks in front of the rocks and the side of the rocks, the way the current forms little eddies where a fish can rest comfortably and still feed. I guess my philosophy is trout are an awful lot more interesting than bugs, but nobody, people study the behavior and life cycle of bugs more than they do of trout, and trout are infinitely more interesting than bugs, I think. So to take that same level of, of scientific discussion that people use for entomology and 
bring that into the trout's world and how a trout lives and what they do all year long and how they feed, I think just adds a lot of interest for, for most people. In pocket water like this where you've got lots and lots of rocks and lots of good places for, for trout to live, you really have to narrow it down and, and fish the best places because if you tried to fish every rock you'd go nuts. There's just too many rocks. So you look for, you look for the best intersection of currents that you can find. Now we've got a really nice situation right here where we've got a rock and then we've got the plume below the rock. This is pretty dead swirly water in here and fairly slow water and then down to the base of this jumble of rocks. So what you've got here is you've got a cushion that builds up in front of these rocks so that the water slows there because of the friction. Then you've got the water that washes down both sides of this rock. And you notice, if you watch the foam that goes down there, you'll see that the foam lines, which is where the food is also going to be carried, goes along either side of the rock. There isn't much foam behind the rock where, where a lot of people might think there'd be a trout. So there isn't much food here. The other, the other nasty thing for a trout behind a rock like this is that the water is swirling. It's unpredictable. The water, you look at it, the water is going in all kinds of directions and, and trout can't predict where that food is going to drift down. They get knocked around and they just, they go for a mayfly and then it gets thrown, thrown another direction they didn't expect it to go. So they like things predictable. But if you look down the sides, you can see that it's a nice predictable progression and where these two plumes that go down either side, either side of the rock join, I like to call the focal point, which is where all the food below the rock comes together. And in this instance, not only do you have a nice focal point here, but you also have a jumble of rocks, so there's a little protection there, both from the current and a little bit of slowing of the current. So my, my vote for where to find a trout in this whole area wouldn't be behind the rock, probably wouldn't be along the sides because there isn't much break from the current, but would be right in this area.